Hey y'all, I'm Shayna, and if you're new here, I'm reviewing Married at First Sight, Season 15, Episode 14. And let me just start off by saying, we didn't need Morgan nor Ben. <laughs> like, actually, they could go back to just having four couples, because we never needed a fifth. Like, it just, it made, it's too much. Well, now we got more time to focus on what we really need to be focusing on, which is Lindy and Miguel. They were slipping through the cracks for the last couple weeks. So let's get into it. Um, if you enjoy this type of content or you've been here before, don't forget to hit the subscribe. It will help me out a ton. Hit the like. It will help with the algorithm. Y'all already know I'm trying to grow my channel. If you like this video at the end and this is your first time, like, comment, share, subscribe if you wish. And let's go ahead and get into it because I got a lot to say about Lindy and Miguel, and I'm going to try to not make this too long. <laughs> so we start with Miguel, and he's telling Lindy that um, since she never went to prom, when they go to their getaway, everyone has decided to do a prom theme party so she can have the prom experience. And I thought that was really nice. I don't know if it was, like, producer-inspired or if he really just, it was heartfelt and he wanted to do that. Later on watching it, I never got clarity on that but so I noticed just something I picked up on that like most of the women were driving to the house just an observation and I'm like these men just never want to get behind the wheel they got this the women just <laughs> chauffeuring them everywhere I think the same thing happened last time anywho so they get to the house and everyone's looking forward to the prom so we see like, well, we, I guess they were mic'd up or, you know, they got the nanny cam. We didn't see them, but we could hear an argument between Lindy and Miguel. Lindy was asking Miguel, like, can you take these pictures? And she's like, no, I want really good ones. Like, um, you know, she started you know, raising her voice a little bit because she really wanted good pictures. Now, to me, I felt like he was blowing us out of proportion a little bit because he made, started making a big deal. Like he started making it about him. And this is where my feelings for Miguel, like, started to shift. Because, you know, she was like, yeah, I, like, don't take a selfie. Like, I, I want a really good picture. The girl's never been to prom. This is supposed to be about her and having her first prom experience. So, naturally, she's going to want to have pictures taken. What is the issue in doing that for her if it's supposed to be her day anyway? It ain't about you. You had your time when you went to prom however many years ago. So, Miguel starts getting frustrated, and, you know, he's like, read the room, and I was laying down, I was tired, and I didn't feel like it. You didn't even drive down, so what you so exhausted from? He's talking about, I don't, I don't want to be your personal photographer. She's not asking you to be that. She's asking you to be her husband, and to take some pictures of her for her, her prom theme party. Like, you set in the tone and the mood for how the night is going to be before it even starts. What are you doing, Miguel? And to me, I'm like, okay, at this point, I'm like, he seemed a little bit off. Like, we, he was sitting up here pointing a finger at Lindy. And everybody thought last week when we saw the clip, like, oh, Lindy's about to go off. You know, she said she could go from zero to 100. <laughs> it's looking like it might be on the other side. So everyone is at the prom. And Lindy says she won't let that disagreement ruin her night. And I thought that was a good way to look at it because I would have been in the mood. But... <laughs> the ladies, I noticed that they were taking group photos. Like, they were out taking pictures and doing different prom theme things. And when the ladies took, like, a ladies group photo, the other three husbands had their cell phones out and they were snapping pictures. Even Mitch was, like, getting into it and he was smiling. And I didn't see Miguel. First red flag. So, <laughs> Miguel is still ruining the night. And, you know, they're off to the side talking and he's, like, saying how Lindy gaslighted him. But really, he's the one guy. Like, why? Why are we still talking about this? Like, we done moved past this. Like, let we're here now. Let's enjoy the night. Um, and he was like, you know, you don't need to be talking to me like that. You're not gonna be talking to me any kind of way. And I'm like, was he bullied as a kid or something? What is? Where is this coming from? What do you mean? Not gonna be talking to me like that? Like, okay. He was like, I just don't like the way you said it. Then when she cussed you out about the insurance, you wasn't saying all this. But that's where I kind of, cause he said, don't talk to me like that. Like, that's where kind of, I guess that's where it began. So now every time she raised her voice a little bit, he more and more like, don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me like that. Until he just, you know, explodes. Maybe. that That's just a guess. <laughs> so I feel like they both played a part in this. 
But he he dragging it. He dragging it down to the ground. He is dragging it all the way across the street and up the block somewhere. He's dragging it. And I'm just like, he, he just won't shut up. And I'm, I just thought I was getting um, a pedicure like the other week. And I just so happened to be talking to the nail tech about prom. And we were seeing like, I was seeing how my ex at the time when I went to prom, he had ruined my prom. Like he pretty much ruined the experience and made it about him. Even though he had already graduated high school and had prom. She was like, yeah, me too. I was in the same situation. And so it's like, is this a, a trendy theme, the theme or a thing? Like when it's supposed to be about the woman, like the man is making it about them. But I'm like, even Mitch is, is not acting up. Like... Everybody else is fine, but Miguel, the, who should be the most supportive husband on Lindy's night, is the one up there having a tantrum and acting like a diva. So they do an award ceremony, and Lindy wins most dramatic, and, you know, she's taking it in stride. She's joking and laughing it off and just enjoying her night. And Lindy and Miguel, of course, won most likely to stay together now. Obviously, people were saying this before this little... Uh, disagreement happened so i'm like okay i don't know now they was up there saying i love you a little fast and now this happened so later that night they're like oh i'm glad we talked about this we're in a much better place so i know everybody had on these pajamas and i'm like that is one thing i would not like about being on this show like not to have too much tmi but like i like to go to sleep comfortably looking hot any kind of way i might not want all these hot satin pajamas on like i gotta have this on to be laying in the bed with you to have conversation i don't want to do it <laughs> like let's talk about it later on when we dress and we out and about but that's just me so of course uh before that they had one i'm sorry i missed the part they had one prom king and queen of course naturally because it's lindy's Prom, the theme, the whole thing is centered around Lindy. So they won and they kissed and everyone danced the night away. Then they said they were getting to a better place. But I'm like, Miguel, to me, is showing um, narcissistic behavior tendencies. Like, he's showing the signs. And then when I started to think back, I'm like, maybe he was showing the signs all along. And I just missed it. Because, you know, Morgan and Ben and everybody else had their own things that was more explosive. So we kind of just didn't even pay much attention to them. <clears throat> excuse me so Sasha and they come to their room because I guess they notice some tension between them so they bring the sex swing and so they're getting into it and you know they have a little laugh about that but I'm like I, they done already did the do now that you know the, the lust wore off people's true colors are starting to show the next day they go on a date uh, they ride in a horse and carriage and of course, not to be surprised, it's her first time because she hasn't done anything in life and everything is her first time, apparently, even though she's about to turn 30. So, you know, she's looking around. She like, you know, this is her first time. So she's looking at the animals and, and, and enjoying the ride. He decides that now all of a sudden he want to be doing um, uh, poetry night snapping his fingers and, and freestyle fridays and i'm like poetry sound like he was up there freestyling what is this we didn't <laughs> why so he begins to freestyle and you know she's like not really interested because why did you pick right now to do that like we did the ride just begun like let me enjoy the ride so she's like oh look over there like you know it's a baby calf <laughs> he's like feeling away because he got you know he got interrupted so now you know, he's starting to feel away and it's showing like his emotions show all over his face. So <laughs> he's like, wait, like, I got another one. And she's like, oh, OK. And she's trying to like, be like, OK, thank you for that. And he's like, oh, it would have sounded better with a beat. <laughs> you know, thanks to Meredith for side day throwing a little beat for him. I'm sure that helped it a little bit. And I'm like, I'd rather hear Mitch over there giving his little one, two, one, two. Like, because he was, you know, he had a nice little little beat going but him like i don't know i'm like okay wrap it up so she's looking she's like oh over there like a baby bear and she's like okay but thank you so now he he's pissed he feels away because he's like how dare you interrupt me when i sat there and was giving putting my heart on my sleeve reciting poetry so they sit down they're drinking wine or whatever they're doing and, you know, he complains because he just cannot let it go and let it be. So he complains about the fact that she interrupted him. 
And she's like apologetic and he's dragging it on and on and on. And she just keeps on apologizing and taking the blame. Like, oh no, it's my fault. And I'm no psychologist or therapist, even though I should have went to school for this or so some stuff just be flat out common sense. Like I done left money on the line, not going to school and getting a career in this. But this seems to be a trauma response. You know, when somebody's quick to be like, oh no, it's my fault and taking the blame. Oh, it's me. Like, yeah, you're, if you've been with a narcissist before, if anybody's ever, let me know in the comments if y'all have ever experienced that. If you've been with one before, then maybe you can see the signs a little bit clearer. And for me personally, I feel like I've been with one in the past. And so naturally it's like, okay, what's well, my fault? Like, because this is uh, last week, this person was love bombing you and telling you all these great things. And now, you know, they tearing you down, up and down the street. And you're like, wait a minute, like, well, maybe it's my fault and maybe we'll get better. Maybe we'll go back. Nah, this is who he really is. So he keep going on and on because he want her to feel bad. And, you know, she's his new supply. So... <clears throat> she cries and she walks away. He runs after her, like after like a minute, and apologizes for making her cry. He's not sorry for what he said or how he said it or nothing like that. He just said he just apologized because she cried about it. I'm like, this can get toxic. So Lenny tells the confessional that you know she's suppressing a lot. Like she can get, she said already she can get cray cray. But she's toning it down for him. And I feel like she is because she ain't gotten crazy yet. The most crazy thing I've seen her do is apologize for no good reason. What are you apologizing for? What did you do? Yeah, it was a little, you know, kind of rude to, like, interrupt right in the middle of that. And she did apologize for that. Like, just end it. Like, don't give her no more. Or you could have been like, you know, that's something that's special to me. It made me feel the way. But your timing was terrible as well. So, I mean, again, y'all both played a part. But only one person is being blamed for this. So before dinner with the group, Lindy is trying to like get selfies and she's trying to take pictures. And I think she asked the producer to take a picture for her. And Miguel is complaining and making a big deal about this. And he's like, um, you know, you didn't, you could have asked me to take a picture, like read the room. Like this time, can't you tell I would have wanted to take a picture? I can't. You're sitting over there having a tantrum with your arms crossed, having a hissy fit, like your panties are in a bunch. So I'm like, and if I hear read the room one more time, please. So, <clears throat> he starts gaslighting her. The very thing he's complaining about her doing, he's doing. And, you know, she says she just, she feels like she just can't win. So, she started trying to say how she feels. But she doesn't want to upset him. So, she's like, you know, asking for a hug and apologizing. And he said no. So, she didn't like it. It made her feel rejected. And nobody wants to feel rejected. So, she felt rejected. And he starts talking about the picture incident from earlier. And I'm like, or the day before, actually. And I'm like, we still on it. Like, this is still on your mind. Like, you are a grudge holder, too. Let it go. So, you know, Lindy is saying in her confessional, she's like, I'm losing my patience. Like, I can't take much more. Like, I already told y'all how I can get, and I'm about to get there. And honestly, like, I, I you know... I can't stand when people use like these explosive words and they like when they are verbalizing things like they take it too far but he was triggering me a little bit and maybe it's me projecting but I'm like why like this didn't cause all of that like obviously she didn't feel comfortable enough to ask you to take the picture because you complained so much the day before now you're complaining that she didn't ask you so no matter what she would have done you would have been complaining and I feel like obviously Behind closed doors, you've been probably starting to do this and nitpick and do all these little things that, like, tear her down all along. Then you come and make up for it when the camera rolling with a plate of spaghetti or something. And, like, and act like, so we like, oh, Miguel, he's such a good man. Mm-mm. Okay. So, he told, you know, he, hold on, what did I write? I, Lord, I can't read my hand. <laughs> so, I don't know what I wrote there, but... Uh, everything is bothering him and oh I said that he um, threatened to walk away like he might not stay after decision day is so many words and he always holds that over her head and he knows that upsets her and it still does obviously you're saying you love her so now she's feeling comfortable like okay well now this is set in stone like she feels safe and then every time she starts to feel a little security around it you throw it up in her face again just like when you busted out of nowhere last week talking about love might not be enough where, where's this coming from like you just want to pick at her try to like tear her down 
So she breaks down and she's like, you know, she just can't do anything right. Like she's so sick of this. And I think she waited for like a minute, like thinking that he would wrap his arms around her or apologize or come console her. He just looked at her like a deer caught in headlights. Like he was looking at her like, what well, girl, what's wrong with you? So she runs off and she's like, I don't even want to go to dinner. And the producer's like, you don't have to go, Lindy. And I'm like, the producer is showing more compassion right now. And I feel like the more you cry with a, uh, now nah, I ain't diagnosing nobody. I'm just speaking in general. The more you cry and like show your emotions with a narcissist, like the less it, it does not affect them. The more you do it, the less they care. And really that could just be with just people in general, like, he playing with you. Like, he got you right where he wants you. Like, so I feel like you crying and getting upset. Now, you done cry about three, four times this episode. So, it don't affect him. He don't care. And, I mean, I'm an emotional person as well. So, it's like, okay, I'm crying because I'm so upset. Like, can't you see you're hurting me? And you're really just hurting yourself the more and more you do it. Because they don't care. And I feel like the only re honest reason why he came around when she went to that bathroom it was because people was around. Like, I feel like the more time that goes by with them, the less he gonna come around. He just gonna let her cry. He don't care. He ain't gonna care. He gonna be like, what was his name? Um, Jose and Rachel. Like, whatever. <laughs> don't care. Like, lock you at the house. You, can't, you don't got no phone, no key. Don't care. So Lindy's in the bathroom breaking down and Miguel asks her like, what does she need from him? If she tells you, are you going to give it to her? Like, does it make a difference? If she tells you, are you going to do it? Or So she, again, said she doesn't want to go to dinner. They didn't go. And I'm just like, okay, he said he loved her pretty early. He was getting all these flowers on all these things. And now you can't even like be nicer. Like you take something that could have been something small and turned it in a mountain um, a mountain into a molehill, molehill into a mountain. Y'all know how to go. So, Lenny and Miguel come out to eat with everyone, like, after dinner. Like, the couples had already had dinner, but after the fact, they came into the kitchen. And he's fake taking accountability. And I say fake taking accountability because he turned around the next day and went back to um, being, you know, a negative Nancy again. So, the couples are planning to play dodgeball the next morning, and Miguel is just, like, being just unpleasant <laughs> and so Miguel and it, like when they were playing dodgeball you know the red team that Lindy was on they decided to Lindy was like and Kristen was like let's split it up like let's not do like couple with couples or uh, men versus women like let's just split it up so it seemed like all the athletic people are like with Mitch aside was on one team and other people was on the other team so they should have had Kristen over there but I guess it would have been like all women so anyway <laughs> The, the came down to the bottom line between Miguel and Nate. So, you know, Nate is trash talking and stuff. And that's how I like to be when I'm playing. A, you know, talk, have a little banter, talk a little trash. Like, it's fun. It's just a game. But he didn't want to do it in the first place. He had already said before they left, like, he just want to turn around and go home. But really, he just stayed in there because he knows she want to be there. But if you're going to be, like, a party pooper or De Debbie Downer the whole time, then it's like, yeah, you're here but, like, I, I would almost, like, rather you not be here. Like, because you still ruining my time because you're just being so negative. He's talking about she's negative. But she hasn't been negative this entire time. Like, even after their fight, she was still optimistic. He was the one. So, you know, Nate won. And Miguel, like, begins to be a crybaby. And he takes it out on Lindy. And I'm like, he just wanted to find a reason to take it out on Lindy. Because nothing else makes sense. She didn't even do nothing. You lost to Nate, not to Lindy. <clears throat> and I think she like might have been trash talking because she was on the other team a little bit, but it wasn't, you know, nothing serious. It was like just playful, like they were joking. And every time she jokes with him, she's like, I was joking. And she takes it back and then she apologizes. And he's like, well, you don't seem firm on what you say. Like, well, pick a side. That's one or the other. And it's like when she does say something, you tear her down. So now she's afraid to speak up. I wish she would speak up for herself. Like, dang, I first it was Kristen. Now these women, y'all got to get that backbone in. Like, don't let these men be doing these things to you. Say what's, speak, say what's on your mind. Speak your mind. So, he took it out on Lindy and, you know, started playing the victim and stormed off. Lindy was uh, sitting down with her team and she was making excuses for his behavior. I'm like, is this Stockholm Syndrome? Uh, too, too soon? Too soon for that? I'm going to give it another couple episodes and see. Because at first I thought maybe because they were so boring for a while, like they were trying to have a storyline. But the way this drag on for these them two hours, nah, something been going on with them two. 
So he's with his team and he's throwing her under the bus, of course, because he don't really like her like that. Even though he tried to claim he loved her, like, do you? I can't. <laughs> Let me keep my mouth closed. Then Lenny just begins to break down and she starts to vent. Sasha said in her confessional, like, Lindy's over-emotional and, like, kind of blaming Lindy, but I'm like, you're only hearing his side. And y'all, and then it's like, even, like, with Justin or whatever, like, when the, per the one person's emotional, it's like, oh, you're just overly emotional, you're overly... But her emotions, what she's just explaining and what she's saying is valid. So you didn't even hear her side. And even then, she's still taking the blame. But bottom line, she says she doesn't want to be his punching bag no more. She's tired of it. But is she going to walk away? No. I think they're going to say yes on decision day. And I saw a glimpse of the after show. I didn't really watch it because it was kind of boring this episode but like even then the guest host was like I wish you would have you know spoke up for yourself and she was like oh no there's more to it and she still was like making excuses for him so that kind of let me know like she probably said yes on decision day and she's scared that if she go home he gonna you know rip her a new one all over again and I'm just I'm looking at Miguel differently. I'm side-eyeing him. Like, she's surely not perfect by far, and she's admitted that. But all this extra apologizing, it was giving Ben, the female version. I'm like, um, married at first sight, y'all getting a little, be a little too toxic now. We don't want to see this. Y'all y'all need to put compatible couples together again. Like, that's what we want to see. When the Woody and Imani was together, we was rooting for them. We was happy. We ain't happy for this mess. They said they love each other, but then look at the, how he's treating her. Can't even take a, this, this stemmed from her asking for a picture for her day. Let's keep that in mind. Moving on, the other couples. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kristen and Mitch. Kristen, you disappointed me, and I knew you would, but dang. I didn't think you was going to do it, like, the very next episode. Like, the end of last week, the last 10 minutes. It was like, yes, Kristen, you know, he only think you cute. Stand up for yourself, like girl power. Ten minutes into the next episode and you're apologizing and you're taking the blame. What the hell is going on? Why is all these women taking the blame for everything? The men, you're ugly. You know what? I'm so sorry that I said something in front of everybody. What the, what? You know. Why? And I knew, I knew, I knew she was gonna do it. I knew it. I was just hoping she wouldn't. Anyway, they drive into the getaway. <coughs> Excuse me. That was nasty. Sorry. And I'm not adding in nothing because y'all know I don't edit. I just what you see is what you get. I don't had a cough for three weeks now. It's cold outside. Anyway, <laughs> Kristen apologized for snapping at Mitch. Um, he plays victim and said he felt attacked. He felt attacked. But she only think about how she felt when you was asking her sister about her not wearing makeup and, and doing her hair. So I feel like, okay, yeah, everybody was kind of coming at him and it caught him off guard. So I feel where he's coming from to an extent. But attacked is like a whole nother level. Like you, you, you putting a little too much on it. Like you putting 20 on 10. So finally in the car, he tells her he thinks she's beautiful. And of course, that's all she needed to hear. If he would have said this, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, like, th th there would be nothing to talk about with him. Even if he don't feel it and don't believe it, it don't seem sincere, don't seem genuine. As long as she hear the words, that's all that matters. So, as long as he said he, she's beautiful, she's like, well, you know, so, she, I feel so good. That's what I've been waiting for. I won't say anything else again. I'm sorry. It was my fault. I shouldn't have said anything. Now you finally told me I'm beautiful. Yeah, he told you you're beautiful because you snapped on him in front of everybody. But okay, they get to the house and Kristen tells everyone that Mitch validated her. I'm like, girl, you giving him too much. So, Mitch, they're getting ready for the prom and he's telling, you know, he's zipping up her dress and he was like, I know that um, Lindy is going to be the prom queen tonight, but you're the prom queen in my eyes or you're my prom queen, prom queen or whatever he said. And it's like corny. Like, I feel like it would have been cute if they just didn't, like, go through a thing again. It wasn't like this the first time. Like, they didn't go through this multiple times, and then it just happened last week. Like, you just did it. Hold on. I'm back. So, you just did it last week. <laughs> like, you turned around after you even said she was unattractive, like, multiple times. And I was like, oh, you'll always be my prom queen. Like, shut up. 
So at the award ceremony, Kristen is rambling, like, who gave her the mic? Like, I think Stasha should have hosted this. It would have been straight to the point, like, because every single thing, Kristen was going on and on. Like, girl, can you get to it? Especially if it was, like, an award and she was about to win. Like, okay, we know it's you. Like, get on with it. So maybe she was drunk. I don't know. Speculation. But she won most likely to get divorced. And Kristen said she voted for herself. Like, yeah, you probably did it last week when he was mad at him, and now you done apologized to him in the car when he was driving up to the place. So I'm like, now, nah. Mitch was like, now, nah, if I would have been joking like that, it would have been a problem, but you can do it, but okay. So the next day, the couple goes on a date to shoot, like, bows and arrows, or whatever it's called. When I say bow and arrow. <laughs> so Kristen wants to pick, like, buzzwords, like a buzzword, and put it on a sheet and shoot an arrow through it. So that way, like, they're ending it. Like, that's the end of it. Like, after today, when we throw the arrow through it, we done talking about it. So she said uh, everyone's favorite word, attraction. She's not going to bring it up anymore because he told her she's beautiful. If he never tells you again, you mean you're not going to bring it up because he said it that one time. If he don't ever tell you again or Dr. Pepper come out of thin air and from a back door somewhere and say, are you attracted to her? And he's like, mm -hmm, you know, I like, kinda, I'm kind of attracted. You're not going to say nothing else about it again. Okay. He said pool gate. I said, is that what we calling it now? Pool gate? <laughs> like, was it all that? Okay. So they were, they're done with it. She's like, well, I'm just saying we had two different experiences. And like, I, yeah, I didn't have to say this. And once she started doing all that, like, it lost its own for me. Bring the sister back on. She would have kept it all the way 100. So the ladies are cooking dinner, and Kristen confirms that she and Mitch are still not having sex because, you know, so much has been going on with them. And Sasha asks Kristen, like, her thoughts for decision day. Basically, she's conflicted. Like, she wants to say yes, but then she feels like, she said, the wife in me wants to say yes, but the woman in me, you ain't been a wife but two seconds, girl. Push that to the side and listen to your instincts. She said the woman in her want to say no. She's going to say yeah. I already see it coming. After dinner, everyone's in the kitchen um, talking, and Kristen comes out, and, you know, she's got on Mitch clothes, and she got on, like, a sock and cap, and she's pretending to be Mitch, and everybody thought it was funny. Um, I mean, it was cute. So the next day, before the couples go play dodgeball, Mitch gives a nice little speech about marriage, so that was nice, and, you know, they were good sports playing the game. That's it for them. So... Sasha and Nate, I got like two sentences on them. Let's get to it. Uh, they're preparing to leave for the trip, and uh, Sasha mentions bringing vibrating panties. Nate switches up his hair. That was nice, a nice surprise. Like, finally, like, maybe maybe he should have wore it like that on his wedding. I don't know. But Sasha is, um, she's going to wear her vibrating panties at the dinner the next day when the couples are having dinner together. And I'm thinking, like, okay, all they're talking about, maybe because they don't have, like, any drama happening right now, so they just got to have something to talk about. But all they're talking about is sex. And it's like, all y'all, like, they overly sexualize Sasha and Nate. Like, more than any couple I've seen before. Like, when they had that steamy shower scene, like, that was straight explicit for them. Like, they used to do, <laughs> man, if I should say, they, it used to come on, like, FYI or, like, another channel or A&E or something. It well, they ain't had all this going on. Like, okay, they'd be like, well, did you consummate the marriage? And they'd be like, yeah, we consummated the marriage. Like, that was spicy enough. Like, with all of this, and they've been, like, overly sexualizing them since then. And I'm like, I don't want, like, sure, I'm sure they talk about other things. But now it's like, okay, now y'all admitted that y'all are having sex. Like, I don't want this to just be like sex, 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 sex all the time. Especially since she's not hearing those magic words, I love you. But thank goodness they didn't talk about that this episode. So they're eating dinner outside um, the day after the prom. It looks cold because Kristen has on a jacket. Like, everybody's been wearing hoodies. And Sasha has on a turtleneck. So why are we eating outside? Like, why don't we eat inside? We were just outside the day before for prom, and I was freezing in my dress. So now I got to eat outside again. But that, that's just my personal thoughts because I don't like the cold. Like, I do not do cold. Like, I don't like the cold. As we can see, I had a cough that's been lingering on for weeks because it's cold. So 
Nate let he let the vib the vibrating panties go on so long. Like he was just letting it go. Like it's like he like flipped the switch and just left it on. Like and she's like, does he not know how to work the switch? He know what he doing. And he doing it on purpose. And that's why I don't wear stuff like that because it's supposed to be like you supposed to just a little zap. Like it's supposed to be cute and funny. But it always be somebody who want to be extra taking it too far. And that's why I don't do <laughs> that type of stuff. So, it was to the point where Alexis was like, is she wearing vibrating panties? Like, she's scooting around her seat and stuff. Like, what are y'all doing? What's going on with y'all two? And Kristen was like, is that what it is? Is that, is that what, what's going on over there? So, finally, like, Sasha was like, whatever. She, she can't handle it no more. So, she jumped up on her seat and ran off. And Nate ran off behind her. And he's like, oh, yeah, I couldn't figure out how to work the switch. Yeah, you could, little liar. Allegedly. But I feel like Nate did that because he liked being in control. Like, even when they had their task to let him be in control, it was sexual. So I feel like, yeah, he feels in control in that moment. And that's probably why she let him do it, just to make, you know, so he could feel like he in control. I mean, Sasha seemed like she a little, you know, a little freaky. But when y'all take that out of it, what else is going on? I'm <laughs> like, besides if I bring panties and the swings and the toys and all that other, you know, little spunky stuff. Like, what else y'all got going on? I mean, I like them. I just want to, you know, I just know I want there to be some more substance. Speaking of sex, oh, Lord, Alexis and Justin. And thank goodness they are the last couple and there's no Morgan and Ben. I just have to say it again. Like, no Morgan and Ben got me relieved. So they get to the house for the getaway. And I didn't want to cough in y'all face. So they get ready for prom and... Alexis isn't giving me prom like she's giving I don't know what she's giving but it's not prom <laughs> I don't know if it was the dress or the wrap uh, that she did with her braids like I feel like she should have just let her braids hang and I, I don't know it wasn't like she was you know she's she's pretty and she looked that that uh, dress was very nice on her skin tone like I like the orange on her skin complexion it just didn't give me prom like, I feel like Sasha and Nate understood the assignment. So, finally, they consummated the marriage. And it came out because uh, Alexis had asked Justin to uh, buckle her shoe. And he was struggling and couldn't get it. I be struggling too with my own shoes. So. And then she was like, yeah, that's how you were struggling with taking off my bra. And I'm like, you just had to embarrass him. That right there let me know, like, he ain't put it down. Because if it was good, you wouldn't even be exposing him like that. Like, you've been exposing him literally since y'all met. We didn't need to know he was struggling with the bra strap and all that stuff. Like, who cares? Like, okay, you still gave him some. So, that's a, something more about you for, for going through with this. You should have been like, you know what? Let's just stop. Like, I don't want to rush. If you have second, second thoughts. So... She like, you know what, like, it's fine. Like, I don't need no man. Like, making little jokes about it, taking little digs. Um, they were, like, lo looking in the mirror at each other. And she was like, well, are you glad? Um, she asked him, like, are you glad that we finally consummated the marriage? And he was like, girl, yeah. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. <laughs> that response would have had me like, ah, what did I just do? Like, mm, it never happened. We, it ne we never did. Like, your word against my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. But I wouldn't have been bringing it up. I would have kept that. I would have been like how Sasha and Nate was in the first couple of weeks. I would have been acting like, look, I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they went on. Um, dang, I was about to just talk right through them. Do they have anything going on at the prom? I don't think so. Devon Franklin, I feel like, was the reason behind this. Devon told her to do it, so she did it, but she really low-key wanted Devon, not Justin. At the award ceremony, Alexis won biggest gossip. She knows she's loose lip. She owned it. On the after show, though, she tried to say, like, with the Ben situation, like, it was Justin who came and told her to stuff to begin with. If it wasn't for him, then she, what I gotta do? Justin was the one that came and told you his wife. So he's the reason why you can't keep whole water. He's the reason. Like, yeah, they shouldn't have told him because there's a high probability that he would have told you. But it should have stopped with you. He, it's his fault that you can't keep your mouth closed. Got it. So the next day, Justin plans a surprise date. And it was to a winery. And they both got, they got two bottles with their names on it. And Alyssa's was like, oh, yeah, we should save it for our one year. And he was like, yeah, I was going to say that. One year? First year? 
A uh, first year what? Like y'all gonna get back together afterwards and be like, oh, I know we said no on decision day, but uh, cheers. Like y'all ain't saying together, so what we even talking about? If they make it, let's just see. So then they're talking outside. I was bored. I see no chemistry between them. Absolutely zero. None. No chemistry whatsoever. Like having sex seemed like it drew a bigger wedge between them because before you just kind of wondering what it's going to be like and you have like maybe some t- sexual tension between y'all. Now Alexis knows that it's trash, allegedly. <laughs> so she don't care. Ladies, later when the ladies are cooking dinner while they waiting on Lindy to come back from arguing with Miguel, Sasha asks Alexis how um, was consummating the marriage. And Alexis basically says she wasn't satisfied, like, because she was like, well, how was it for you? And she's like, well, as long as he's happy. And she's like, would you stay with somebody if it wasn't good? Girl, just say it was terrible. But she did make a point where she's like, you know, the first time, sometimes it can be awkward. And that is true. Sometimes you don't know each other. You're trying to, you know, fill each other out. So the first time can sometimes, can sometimes be awkward. But I think it's just awkward for you because you don't like them. You can't stand them. You did it to see if there was going to be a spark. There ain't. And now you definitely going to say no on decision day. That was another check on your list. Like, oh, and the sex is bad. Like, bye. Because the, dra- the dog thing, we ain't want to hear it no more. So you had to have something else. So everyone's eating dinner outside. And Sasha told Nate in their uh, confessional that Alexis and Justin had sex. And she said she wasn't pleased. <laughs> and Nate was like, really? Like, he was taken aback. Like, they had sex? Like, I'm surprised. I think all the couples, Morgan and Ben, we know they don't count. Everybody else, everybody else, I believe, did. Lindy and Miguel, Kristen and Mitch. I'm trying to think. Am I missing somebody? Yes, yeah, so everybody else did consummate the marriage. Um, Consummating the marriage seemed like it helped Lindy and Miguel at first, but not now. Consummating the marriage seemed like it helped Sasha and Nate. But for how long? Because we know we see some clips for the rest of the season, and they about to get into it, too. So we're going to see what that's about. But it, without fail, every time they go to these houses and they go on these group trips, one couple set it off. So it was Lindy and Miguel, but it was not who we thought. I, I, at least to my surprise, I thought it was going to be Lindy acting the fool, but it was Miguel who chapped my behind this time. Let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Be sure to check out my other content, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.